Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. So I was on Twitter again, a bad idea, I know, but there's a thread by at Cynic Media that I wanted to take a look at. It goes over the novelization of the new live action Little Mermaid remake coming out soon. It seems to confirm a lot of the things that the people behind the movie have been saying, while also confirming some of the rumors. The thread starts out by comparing it to the 2017 Beauty and the Beast remake, which in my opinion was one of the worst, being redundant to the original and making unnecessary changes. I've already covered some of the changes they're making to this movie, like changing the lyrics to two of the songs, but we get a more in-depth look into some of the other changes here. Right off the bat, it feels like they suck the fun out of it. In this version, mermaids are feared by humans. They seem to be pulling from folklore of sirens dragging sailors to their deaths. So sailors actively try to fight them. One of the sailors is throwing a harpoon at a dolphin because he assumes that it's a mermaid, and Eric kind of feels like a different character. Instead of being introduced to a fun-loving, adventurous prince, he comes off as stern and not really that amazing imaginative, saying that even as a child he thought mermaids were far-fetched and silly, as opposed to the supposedly wooden and boring original who was excited to hear about mermaids. It also feels like when it comes to his character, instead of fleshing out what was already there, they just copy and pasted Ariel's story onto him. Then again, it doesn't seem like they really recognize what was there to begin with. They gave him a mother in this movie, who is very strict with him, not allowing him to sail after what happened with the storm, and he also has a secret collection of trinkets he's taken from the ocean and I actually think that would be a cute addition. The original did imply that he and Ariel were kindred spirits, which I went over in my previous video, both longing to be a part of each other's worlds, but it feels like they took away aspects of his character to just replace them with copies from Ariel. In this version, they cut the scene where Eric receives his birthday present, a stern and stoic statue of him. This scene is important because it gives us insight into his character. The statue represents what he's expected to be, but that's just not who he is. For a prince, he's pretty modest, often seen wearing casual clothes, even around the castle, and he often interacts with his subjects, like the sailors or the people around town, and the people seem to be on a friendly basis with him. He's humble, a hopeless romantic, a fun-loving adventurer, but none of that is reflected in the statue, and the face he makes at it is very telling. It's a great scene for non-verbal communication, and I don't agree with cutting it. Now let's move on to Ariel. I don't understand these changes either. Here they say that Ariel's never actually been to the surface until she saw Eric's ship before the storm. This change seems particularly baffling. Ariel is so fascinated with the land, why has she never been to the surface before? They also changed Scuttle to be a diving bird instead of a seagull, I'm assuming so she can talk to, in this case her, without actually breaching the surface. But why? One of the main arguments that critics of Ariel have is that she threw everything away for a man, which I think is a gross misunderstanding of the character, but now the first time she ever went to the surface was for Eric's ship? I just have a hard time believing that she never went to the surface before this. Feels like they didn't think this through. They also changed it that instead of them performing a concert for the kingdom, King Triton and his daughters are just sitting together in the audience. So Ariel just forgets to show up to the party instead of missing her cue at the concert, which in my opinion kind of lowers the stakes and the tension for Ariel and her family, which seems to be an issue just in general with this movie. Quick side note, I do wonder why they specify that Eric is adopted, but they don't explain Ariel's sisters being all different races. They added a scene where the mermaid are cleaning up the shipwreck, but they're blaming the humans for being careless with their shipwrecks, which is a little ridiculous. I can understand if they were complaining about pollution, but it's not like humans are actively trying to kill their sailors. I guess the merfolks hate humans, but I think there was a better way to have an environmentalist moment. Anyway, after Ariel rescues Eric and her father destroys her grotto, instead of having Flotsam and Jetsam come in to manipulate her, Ursula does it herself by opening up a portal between the two. Ursula doesn't just make a contract with Ariel, she also puts a spell on her, so that, oddly enough, she has to forget that she has three days to get Eric to kiss her, otherwise she'll turn back into a mermaid. Of course, Ursula doesn't want Ariel to succeed, but it seems like a weird choice. First of all, a lot of the tension came from the time limit. Like I was saying earlier, this is going to affect that tension and probably the pacing of the movie. Now whenever that part of the contract is referenced, Ariel's mind is forced to wander. It seems like they're shying away from the romance aspect of the film. Halle Bailey went on record saying that she doesn't leave just for a boy, which honestly misses the point of Ariel's character, but I've already spoken on that, but goes on to say it's way bigger than that. It's about herself, her purpose, her freedom,
freedom, her life, and what she wants. So I guess they think by having her forget about the kiss, she's able to focus on other things and not just Eric. I'm sure you're all sick of me complaining about how they don't understand this movie but are remaking it anyway, but I don't think this actually benefits the story the way they think it does. When Ariel arrives on land, she's discovered by a fisherman instead of Eric. Apparently, Eric has been searching the town for his rescuer instead of the beaches, although wouldn't it make more sense if you met someone at a certain spot to go back to that spot to find them, even if she was from the town? But the fisherman takes her to the palace. Again, I'm not sure why. Eric took her to the palace for obvious reasons. He's the prince. But wouldn't a random fisherman just take her to the hospital or something? But this is how she meets Eric. This time he has to sneak out to show Ariel the kingdom because his mother forbid him from leaving the castle. Again, I think you can have parallels between these two characters without actually copying Ariel's story. And then in Kiss the Girl, Ariel is the one pulling away from Eric because of the spell. In the original, Ariel was actively trying to kiss him, but Eric kept pulling away because he was saving himself for his rescuer, and he doesn't think Ariel could be that girl. And in the remake, he still thinks Ariel isn't that girl. So now I'm not entirely sure what the point of this song is. It doesn't seem like he needs the same kind of prodding he did before. Instead, they have Ariel being reminded that she needs to kiss him. This is one of the songs they changed the lyrics to, claiming that in the original, it was treating Ariel as nothing but an object of desire and encouraging Prince Eric to kiss her without any consideration for whether she actually wants that. But how does that statement in any way reflect the original movie? Ariel was the one coming on to him, and Eric was the one who was hesitating. That's pretty clear in the lyrics too, commenting that he's shy and he's going to miss her, cause she's gonna end up in the Sea Witch's garden. It's also pretty offensive to the lyricist Howard Ashman, who can't even defend himself because he's passed away. Nothing about the context of these lyrics imply that Eric is forcing himself on her, but Rob Marshall is misinterpreting the song and then stating this like it's a fact. Seriously, has he even seen The Little Mermaid? How can he direct this movie and be so far off base? But now she has amnesia whenever kissing is brought up, which in my opinion makes it a little weird, at least weirder than it needs to be. She kinda can't consent. If she keeps forgetting every time kissing is brought up or being forced to pull away from him, then I don't think they thought this through. In the original, she was the one in control of the scene, and yet they claim that she was just an object of desire? Meanwhile here, at least based on what we've seen, it does come off like he's being forceful. He pretty much has to if he's going to kiss her. I just don't see how this change is empowering. It seems like a mistake. They keep the plot point where Ursula disguises herself as Vanessa, but I'm not really sure why she's necessary anymore. It seems like more work for Ursula to disguise herself when Ariel already has amnesia. She could probably just put her to sleep for the time remaining. As for the ending, it's been confirmed that they are changing it to Ariel steering the ship but everything else seems to be the same, which also doesn't make sense. If Ariel still kills Flotsam and Jetsam, then why would Ursula ignore her to focus on Eric, who is now in the whirlpool? It's like they just saw Ariel as a damsel in distress and thought they had to fix it. I already made a whole video on this, so I'll try not to repeat myself too much, but they're totally ignoring Ursula's motivations in this scene. When she drags Ariel into the depths, she tells her that it's nothing personal, and she was just doing this to get Daddy's Trident. Poor little princess, it's not you I'm after. I have a much bigger fish to- Ursula, stop! But then when Ariel causes Ursula to misfire and hit Flotsam and Jetsam, it becomes very personal. Up until that point, she was mostly taunting them and defending herself as they were fighting over the trident. But now she wants Ariel dead, which gives Eric the chance to commandeer the ship, specifically because she's so focused on getting revenge. Now it just doesn't make any sense, aside from the message, I guess. Then in the end, they don't get married, but end up traveling the world together. A common complaint about this movie was that the wedding was rushed. Again, I already addressed this, but I do think the wedding had more of a narrative purposes than just happily ever after. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but after all, Eric had been being pressured into getting married the entire movie. But also, given the animosity there was between the sea and the land, which they've ramped up in this movie by having the human kingdom also hate the mermaids, their wedding represented a union between these two worlds, and there can finally be peace between the kingdoms. There's a quick scene where Eric and King Triton acknowledge each other. Trident bowing to a human shows how much he's grown as a character, especially since earlier in the movie he said it would have been better if Eric had died. I just don't think that any of these changes really make the narrative stronger. They're grossly misrepresented the original film, and they're trying to fix things that aren't actually broken. I wouldn't be surprised if this remake was financially successful. After all, it's not like Disney would be making these remakes if they didn't think they could make a lot of money off of it, even if I personally don't care for them. But that's my opinion. What do you guys think? How do you 
feel about the changes they're making to the Little Mermaid narrative? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching everyone, I really appreciate it. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to our members, Stutania, Tyrant Carnivore, Adam K, Shiny Orc Boy, The Rabbit Mancer, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Hussyman42, Nixel, Phil C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Bandito Bane, Dakari the Professor, Equestron, Norman Sweet Cream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Garcia XV Legend, Hunter Rose, Dash Hound, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Miranda Sinistra, Butcher 7 Actual, Felix Bam, Soundboy 00, Owen Wildish, Player Zero, Kitsune Fiora, Lucas Geist, Data Dine Executive, and Jay Draws. Thank you all so much for your support. If you want to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. You can also support the channel by leaving a like on this video and subscribing. It helps us out a lot and it's free. We also have Buy Me Coffee if you want to support us that way, and a link to that will be in the description. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone! Thank you.